Ronald Allen, managing change through strategic communications. And tonight, prefaces, I would say, a trajectory that started when I was a little kid. And I mentioned to you in the promotion of this particular discussion that this is really about the meaning we subscribe to life itself. Yet the questions we ask are derived from our programming, our culture, our family. So I wanted just to share with you some perspectives that over 60 years, I can look back in my life and I can subscribe to things that I like, things that I was good at, that I still like, and most importantly, I'd like to share with you a, a little script I wrote on LinkedIn that's got over 260 hits with no image, no special graphics, no infograph, no doohickeys or dancing werewolves or kangaroos, just strictly text, old fashioned text. And basically the message was, Let's stop calling each other old. The brain does not know how old you are. Stop telling your mind that you are old. And so I'm gonna build on that with information that I have here that I've kind of pulled out of the library, I pulled out of my office, I pulled out of the work that I do so we can transition from both a professional to personal and from the personal to the professional. I've obviously crafted this medium with a nice fire. The temperature outside is cold. It was raining yesterday. The temperature is supposed to drop uh, into the teens um, tomorrow, tonight and tomorrow. So my whole preface has to come from somewhere, just like yours, just like your emotions that you have. And after 24 years with Miriam, my wife, a very intuitive person, I have found that it is the yin and yang of our lives experiences that we subscribe and then say, this is life. Yet I have to ask, is it? Is it the frustration that we have with ourselves because someone else tells us that you've had your innings, for those who love cricket, is it that we look a certain way after being bashed on life's rocks? Do we pick ourselves up or do we go silently into the night? I'd like to start off, in, in some respects start off, with a gentleman that I used to follow. Some of you may know um, Steve McQueen, an American racer, also actor, back in the 70s, 80s, early, even earlier, who brought um, Indy 500 racing to Europe. And at the time, as a kid, my brother and I used to always follow all the great races. Well, 40 years later, I meet a gentleman who is in the oil business in a totally different state, who unfortunately had a very unfortunate life experience. And even though I visually represented the perpetrator in his life, he went after we had a discussion about car racing, um, engineering, I love the 959, which is the Porsche, which by the way is almost 25, 30 years old now. But the engineering in that car is what you see in today's economy cars. Much of the features, the brake systems, um, the electronics, the computerization systems. Well, this gentleman, without my knowing, went and picked up a signed autograph of a gentleman called Mario Andretti. I don't know if you can see this. I hope it's not inverted. But this is a gentleman that, as a young man, I idolized because of his profession. So why do I share that with you? What has that got to do with subscribing to the meaning of life, personal and professional? 
Well, as a young man, I never would think I would be able to receive this. Certainly not from a stranger who I had barely met three months. He went out of his way because of the camaraderie we had built, the rapport, and knowing that this gentleman lives locally, at least in the footprint that I travel in the East Coast of the USA, and managed to get me this signature. And I, I, I kind of tease my brother with it. I say, Henry, in your face. <laughs> Mario Andretti, one of the world's greatest race car drivers, who because of his dedication, his commitment, we have the kind of cars and the features in those cars today, spe specifically the, the torque, um, uh, the, the, the brake systems, the, the, the cornering, all of those real technical aspects that make today's cars significantly better than they were back then. And more importantly, for those of you who are really paying attention, the subscription that as you commit to an interest, no matter what anyone else says, strange things will happen, like an autograph by a world-class racer who I have never met. Yet 40 years plus later, a gentleman that I have a casual conversation with decides that, you know what, I'm going to go out of my way to help this young chap. So if you understand that message, you'll realize that many of the things that we do, despite life's noise and pushback, will reward us. Not maybe immediately, certainly not in that case. Yet, as another individual in my life had shared with me, I have stick to itiveness, you will reap the rewards of being in the zone. You've heard that in sports. So what does that mean in your personal life and certainly your professional? If you're in the wrong community of people, you tend to galvanize and behave and adapt their behavior, their mindset. So when you subscribe to life, what is your reality? If you are coming from a negative environment and begin to change your trajectory, even a millimeter, even a half a degree, if you ever look at a compass, multiple degrees, you will end up if you stay the course. Now, I'm not one to here to tell you, wake up in the morning, rabbit, jump up, rock and roll. I mean, I've shared with you how my mother was. She was very much that way. She was, yet it was honed into her by her parents. It was drilled into her by her parents. She had a saying, cram it in, shove it in. Children's heads are hollow. They must learn the things today that they will use tomorrow. Too many parents pull back thinking that they're hurting their children. They are demanding too much. All we have to do is look at the world and the state of individual behaviors. And instead of managing ourselves, we give in. Another gentleman I'd like to share with you, who I also met in uh, Harrods of London when I 